Good morning, Pleasant Green, and those that are tuning in from wherever you are. We're happy to welcome you to our service this morning. This first song that we're going to sing says, Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. It says, everywhere I go, everywhere I be, Jesus is mine. It says, he's mine in the morning. He's mine in the evening, all the day long, singing our song. So we love if you join us from right where you are as we sing this familiar song. Whoa, say, Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Yeah. Say, Jesus is mine. Jesus yeah, I said everywhere I go, everywhere I said go. everywhere I be, everywhere I, I be. know oh, Jesus, Jesus is mine. Jesus Let's do that again. Mine. Jesus is mine. Yes, he Jesus is. Jesus is mine. He's all of mine. Yes, Jesus he is. Yes, he is. is. I said everywhere I go, everywhere said, I, everywhere I, go. I, be. I be, I know. Oh, Let's do that one more time. Jesus is mine. Yes, he is. Jesus is mine. He's all of mine. Yes, he is. Jesus is mine. Hey, I said everywhere I go. Everywhere I said I go. everywhere I be. Everywhere I, I be. know oh, Jesus is mine. Jesus the second part mine. says he's mine in the morning. Mine it says he's mine in the mine evening. evening. Say all the day long. Singing my song. He's mine in the morning. Yeah, he's mine in the evening. Say all the day long. Singing my song. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. He's on the mind. Yes, he is. Yeah. Hey, I said everywhere I go. Everywhere I be. I know. About that name, yeah. Something about that name, yeah. There's something about that name, yeah. Something about that yes, name. Yes, there is. Yeah. There's something about that name, yeah. Something about that name. Say, yeah. There's something about that name. Yes, there something is. About Say it with name, me. Yeah. It soothes all my doubts. All my yeah. doubts. Yeah. It soothes all of my doubts. Yeah. All my doubts. Say it soothes. So Oh my God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, all my doubts. Oh my and what doubt. else? It calms. Oh. Calms all my fears. Oh my fears. It calms. Oh. Calms all my fears. Oh my yeah. fears. There's something about that name, yeah. Something about that name, yeah. yeah. There's something about that name, yeah. Something about that name, yeah. yeah. There's something about that name, yeah. Something about that name, yeah. Something about that yes, name, there yeah. is. There's something about that name, yeah. Something about that name, Say it with name, me. Yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say yeah. heads for a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, the great I am that I am. Father, we thank you once and again 
for another opportunity that you've allowed us to come together to lift your name in praise. And Father, we recognize that all the glory and all the honor and all the praise is due unto thee because you are worthy. Father, we thank you that you awakened us again this morning. Father, we were still clothed in our right minds, yes, yes. the blood still flowing warm yes. in our veins. Yes. And Father, we recognize what could have been, but because of you, it didn't, you wouldn't allow it. And Father, we thank you. Thank you. Father, we just asked you, we know we don't have to speak it because you see it before we say it, you already knew it. But we just ask, Father, that you would attend to every care, to every household, to everyone under the sound of our voice, Father, that you would be their comforter, that you would be their peace of mind, that you would calm their spirits, Father. We know that uh, all things you are aware of, but Father, in this moment of discontent and chaos and havoc is all over the world, Father, people question, where is God? But Father, we ask answer with the affirmity that you are where you have always been. And that is you are everywhere at the same time. And Father, we rest assured upon that. We realize, Father, that when someone calls, that was you. When someone just stops by to lend a helping hand, that that was you. We realize that in the hospitals and the emergency rooms that you're there also. We realize, Father, on the streets for the homeless that you're there also. Father, we realize that for those that are sick and shut in, they were sick and shut in before this tragedy occurred, but you're there also. Father, we recognize that for those that have given all that they have and they're weak and they're tired, that you said your strength is made perfect in our weakness. And we rest upon those things, Father. And we just ask that you would keep us committed, keep us diligent, keep us uh, strong in your word. And let us be ambassadors and examples today. If ever before the world needs to see the people of God, let it be us. Let your light shine in a world of darkness. And Father, we thank you. And as the word goes forth today, Father, let it be comforting to every ear that is listening. And then, Father, as always, don't let us just be hearers alone, but let us be doers of your word. And we ask it all in the name of Christ, and for his sake we ask it. Amen. Thank you for that powerful prayer. Father, for your word, you said, in this world we shall have tribulation, but you told us to be of good cheer, for you have overcome. Lord, you're our strength. Lord, you're our hope and you're our peace, and we're so grateful.
Straight line. Straight line. No.
We bless God for who God is. We're thankful for God allowing us this opportunity, even during this season of quarantine. I think it is always important uh, to pray. We pause now to tell God thank you, even during this unprecedented season uh, for the world. God, we pray uh, that your people uh, find solace during this time of solitude. And Lord God, that something uh, is said to them that might change their lives. God, we pray now that ministry go forth, even though it seems like the church is at a standstill. God, let your spirit go forth. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. We want to just read uh, a verse out of one of the most familiar passages of Scripture um, to the Christian faith, we want to go to Psalm 23. Psalm 23. The 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm. Uh, the 23rd Psalm. And what we want to do is we just want to read, um, we want to read just three verses, just three verses out of the 23rd Psalm. And there you will find words similar to this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet or the still waters, and he restores my soul, and he leads me in the paths of righteousness. Amen. I think that's just enough. Amen. That's just enough. And just for a little while, I want to share with you, um, pleasant parishioners and partners of PG, this theme. Be still and chill. Be still and chill. Brothers and sisters, we understand that this is a time that is unprecedented in the United States of America, but one of the things that I want to advise you to do, uh, if you uh, are under the sound of my voice, I want to advise you to be still and chill. In the wake of this crisis over the last week and a half, uh, normal operations in America have come to a standstill. There has been practically no motion, no movement, no barber shops, no beauty shops, no pastimes. We are in a state of emergency under orders to stay home. Quarantine for many has forced us into a place of isolation. But one of the hardest things in our culture and our civilization to do today is be still and be quiet. Because most of us have notifications coming through on a variety of platforms. Perhaps many of us get tweets, perhaps many of us get direct messages, many of us get emails, many of us uh, have text messages, many of us have software updates. And in this, in this society and in this culture, it is hard to be still and be quiet. We see such a parallel in our pericope, the psalmist alludes that there are times in life where the Lord guides us into places of solitude and solace so that we can be apprised by God and edified by the Holy Spirit. 
So I suggest to you, brothers and sisters, quarantine is not so bad because in light of the Lenten season, it compels us to make space for listening to the most important voice, and that is the voice of God. Therefore, I submit to you today, pleasant parishioners, don't always avoid or attempt or try to bypass those times of silence and solitude because it is in those times, it is at those places of silence and solitude that the Lord tends to speak. It is at those places when we are quiet. It is at those places when God has our attention. It is at those times where God gets our attention. God quiets the mind so that he can speak to the soul. Ironically, it is there where God gives strength to the weak. And God gives assurance to the uncertain. It is there where God gives enlightenment to those who are bewildered. It is that secret place in that sacred closet where God refines our imperfection. It is at that place, brothers and sisters, where we learn how to walk with God and fellowship with God. And I suggest to you this, brothers and sisters, that it is at that place where God works the best. It is here where God creates masterpieces in our lives, and it is not in the perimeters of the crowd, but it is in the privacy of your prayer closet. If you don't believe me, we can search the scriptures. We can ask Moses. Moses was alone before the burning bush, and it was at that place where he discovered the meaningfulness of stillness. That's why he was able to say to the people of Israel, the congregation, as they were in between a rock and a hard place, one direction was blocked by Pharaoh's army and the other direction was engulfed by the Red Sea. It was because Moses spent time in solitude with God that he had the courage to say, stand still and witness witness the salvation of the Lord. And he says, once you witness the salvation of the Lord, he said, on this day, you will not see the Egyptians again. And I want to pause parenthetically to say and tell you, brothers and sisters, that when God delivers you, you don't have to worry about seeing that same thing that you were delivered from anymore. God is able to bring you out. God is able to pull you through. God is able to lift you up out of down situations. The Lord is my shepherd. He says, be still and know that I am God. David created this masterpiece in the stillness, uh, in, in the stillness, and, and he created this masterpiece, brothers and sisters, this 23rd Psalm, as he re was reflecting over the provisions that God had made for him. David was writing this song as he was thinking about what God had already done for him in the past. And I want you, brothers and sisters who are in virtual quarantine, you just think about what God has already done for you. You can get happy and just think about the things that God has already delivered you from. And I want to encourage someone out there today that he's delivered delivered us before, and he can do it again. 
Brothers and sisters, but that's only when you get to a position, a spiritual position, enough so that you can recognize what God is doing. When you are still, sometimes God calls us to be still, and I just believe that that's why God did this in this Lent season. God is calling us to be still. And what I share with you, brothers and sisters, when you are still, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, your focus becomes more keen. When you are still, your awareness becomes a little more sensitive to the external conditions around you. When you are still, brothers and sisters, you can perhaps see things that you did not see before. You might be able to hear things that you were perhaps unable to hear in the noisiness of the crowd, but sometimes God calls us as a people of God just to be still. Be still, be still, be still. That reminds me of when I was a lad, when I was a little boy, and my mom would be driving, and she'd have the music up, and she'd have the music up, but when it came time for her to park, she told us to be quiet, and she turned the music down. I'm in. Brothers and sisters, what I did not understand then, I didn't understand Wow, uh, why she had to have the music turned down. I didn't understand why she wanted us to be quiet so that she could see better. But what I'm understanding now in my life, brothers and sisters, sometimes we need quietness in order for us to be able to focus on what we're doing. God is calling us to a place where he desires for us to be focused and on what we are doing. Again, you can perhaps hear things that were too faint for us to perceive in the noise of the crowd, if you are still, brothers and sisters, sometimes God sharpens our view. Brothers and sisters, in the stillness of our own solitude, God fixates our focus and he intensifies our discernment. In the stillness of our solitude, he centers our judgment so we can be better able to make better decisions brothers and sisters, and also what he does for us in our quiet time is that he reaffirms our hope in Jesus Christ. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in the solitude of my own sacred space, I discovered a few favorable facets of the text that help us to understand what God does for us when we learn how to be still. First of all, I see in the text, we have to be still to be restored. Be still to be restored. Let me say that one more time for those of us in uh, internet world. Brothers and sisters, you've got to learn how to be still to be restored. The text says that God leadeth me beside the still waters. And then verse 3 says, he restores my soul. There's something, there's something here to be said about still waters. I, I know that we're used to hearing the Sunday school Bible commentary say that shepherds used to lead uh, the sheep beside still waters because sheep could not drink from running, running water, and if they fell into the water, they could not swim well. I did a little research on that, brothers and sisters. Don't believe that, because if you look at YouTube, you'll see a whole lot of sheep drinking from running water faucets, and then you'll even see sheep swimming across great bodies of water. But what, I'm, what I've understood is, is that perhaps the author is trying to push us to something a little bit deeper in the text because 
what he's trying to get us to understand that is God is leading us to a place of serenity and that God is offering us in that place of serenity an area of rest. God is offering for our believers a place of refreshment and God is also giving us a sense of resource so that we can all be restored. As a matter of fact, one translation says, he leads me beside peaceful streams. It literally means waters of stillness, a place so serene that it invites you to lie down and to rest and relax even though you understand or you've been through hell and high water. I know many of us, we need that rest and relaxation, and you need that rest and relaxation to be restored. You see, what still waters represent a calmness that only God can provide. I don't know whether you go to ghouls. I don't know uh, what spa you go to, and I'm pretty sure they have either running water or they have a simulation of water for you to listen to you for you to listen to. But brothers and sisters, what I'm suggesting to you today is that God can provide a calmness that nobody else can. It's something special to be able to lie down and rest when the world seems like it's reeling and rocking. It's something to be able to lie down at night and chill uh, and be still when you know that even in the midst of your rest, the stock markets are crashing and 401ks are falling, brothers and sisters, but it is something to be able to yet and still lie down at night and to know that God is still in control. God can give you peace even in the midst of that crash. That's why Jesus said, uh, That's why Jesus said when they were on the boat with him, says, peace be still. If that ain't enough, Jesus said, come unto me. All you who labor and who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. It's only after David had been led to still waters that he experienced the restorative power of God. Brothers and sisters, you can't experience God's hand until you have sought God's face. You cannot experience what God has to offer until you offer admonition to who God is. You can't have the peace that God has until you offer God all the pieces of you that you have. Brothers and sisters, you've got to understand that to be restored, you've got to give yourself to God. Still waters are indicative, again, of two things, rest and refreshment. Rest and refreshment. You all know uh, that we need water to be refreshed. And brothers and sisters, we need rest so that God can give us the energy to keep going. Brothers and sisters, we've got to understand that not only, not only that we need to be still to be restored, but we've got to learn that we need to be still to be redirected. We need to learn how to be still to be redirected or to receive our route. What the text says is that he restoreth my soul, and then after the psalmist gets so happy about 
God restoring uh, his soul, he says that he leads me in the paths of the righteous. And brothers and sisters, I'm thankful that I serve a God that leads us in the paths of righteousness. But I want to say this, before we get too happy about God leading us to where we have to go, we must not think that this is something that is automatic. Don't think that God leading you in the paths of righteousness is automatic and that you don't have to pray for it. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you look at David's prayer in Psalm 25, 4 through 5, he says, Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your past. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. For thee I will wait all the day long. In Psalm 23, God answers his prayer and God led him in the paths of the righteous. And I want to suggest to you, brothers and sisters, you cannot be led unless you desire God to lead you. Therefore, you have to pray for God to lead you in the right path. I, I'm done now. I'm done now. I know I only have so long to keep our virtual attention, uh, but we want you to understand that you have to be still to be restored uh, you also have to understand that you have to be still to be redirected to receive your route. And then you have to be still to be redeemed. It says, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Brothers and sisters, uh, his name's sake, if we look at the text, we have to understand uh, that the divine shepherd seeks to save who all is lost. He's, he is not only the restorer of souls, but he's also the one who guards and cares for us. He keeps us in the faith. He brings us back when we wonder. He leads us in the paths of righteousness, and God's work in salvation is comprehensive. And if we think about God, one of his names is the Redeemer. And he redeems us when we are still. And I want to help someone to understand uh, that this crisis is no more large than what God can handle. Our crisis is no more complex than the problems that God has already solved. The seasoned saints would say it like this, we serve a problem solver. The baby boomers would perhaps say it like this, he's peace in the valley. The millennials would say it like this, he's bigger than the problems that I face. But I believe that we can all agree on this one thing is that God is still in control. And just because problems arise in our lives, we serve a God that does not resign because those problems are too big. We don't serve a God that resigned when he had to deal with Pharaoh. We don't serve a God that quit when he had to deal with Nebuchadnezzar. We don't serve a God that threw in the towel when he had to deal with Goliath. Brothers and sisters, when Goliath started wilding out, we don't serve a God that turned around when he had to talk to Jezebel. We don't serve a God that changed when things got out of control. And what I want you to understand, even in your place of quarantine, that God God still reigns. I know he's all right. Oh, Lord. I know he's all right. I know he's all right. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's a rose of Sharon. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. The door 
of God's house is open. The door of God's house is open. Hallelujah. We bless God again for who God is. Uh, while we worship God uh, in these unprecedented times, uh, as we worship God uh, on the internet and as we stream, we want you to also remember uh, that giving is also a part of worship, and we want you to um, um, not miss those opportunities for giving. Amen. Stewardship is more than an obligation. 
It is an opportunity to witness the reckless nature of God who gives the gift of salvation by grace to all who will receive it. Resolute giving tempered by generosity is the fullest expression of the life of a steward, one who has been given a gift that must be used with a purpose of giving glory to God. So brothers and sisters, uh, as we uh, deal with this time of quarantine, uh, we want you not to forget um, your chance to give. You can give uh, through check and money order. You can send that to uh, 1220 G.H. Pruitt Place, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Or you can also give online uh, at www.pgmbcstl.org. Brothers and sisters, please don't forget to give. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Tell the world. As you go. Amen, amen. Once again, uh, we, uh, we are glad that we're able to reach you via streaming and via internet. Uh, we welcome all of those who are perhaps guests uh, who have logged in, uh, and we want to recognize our guests uh, at this time. If you are a guest who has logged in and stumbled across our site, perhaps, uh, we want to welcome you. We are a church uh, who is striving to be pleasantly purposeful for all people. We do that, brothers and sisters, through offering a relevant word, a relatable worship, reaffirming relationships, resolute giving, and restorative community development. So we want to welcome you this time by saying all together, you. you are welcome. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I think the time has been spent well. We pray that your week goes well. Uh, we want you uh, to pray with us as we pray with you. Let's pause for a word of prayer and benediction. God, we thank you for who you are, and we thank you that you have power to permeate even the airways uh, and the virtual sites. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask that you keep the people who are listening safe. Lord God, that you keep them from the coronavirus, God. And God, we ask that you keep them from 
all other manner of devastation because we know that you are God. God, help us to understand what it means to be still and chill. God, help us to understand what it means to be still, to be restored, and, and then be still, to be redirected, and to receive our right or our route from the Heavenly Father. And Lord God, help us to understand what it means to be still so that we can be redeemed by a God who's able to do all things. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. May we all say here and in virtual world, amen, 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 amen. and amen. 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 Go in peace.